Batman and the Bat Family hold the line against the Orgum army overrunning Gotham and setting the city ablaze. Can they stop the Orgum secret plan before it's too late? Let's find out in our review of Detective Comics number 1087 from DC Comics. See you in three. I'm just going to put it out there. This series has been exhausting. In fairness, this issue is one of the less pretentious, convoluted pieces of overwritten narrative to come out of Ron V's quaff, but the constant push and pull of multiple threads reacting and overreacting to each other just sucks the life out of the story. Two more months to go, folks. It's just two more months, and then Ron V's run will finally be over, and we all can say a collective hallelujah. When we last we left the Dark Knight in Detective Comics number 1086, the Orgums unleashed an asthma infected army on the streets of Gotham, mostly comprised of the downtrodden and the forgotten citizens of the city. They set the town ablaze, trying to destroy everything in their path. The mysterious Shadow Angel, a new character that just sort of popped up out of nowhere, and his cadre of asthma enhanced brutes held an entire building hostage. Jim Gordon gave Commissioner Montoya the data that suggested the Orgums were planning something much bigger, so it's a seed leading to something, not quite sure what. And meanwhile, the Joker visited Duella Dent in her life of retired bliss to manipulate her and force her to relapse into becoming a psycho killer. In Detective Comics number 1087, the Bat family fans out across the city to stop the Organs' army of the downtrodden from dragging upper-class citizens out of their homes and hanging them in public squares. While his soldiers keep up the fight, Batman concludes his meeting with the Ten-Eyed Man when they discern a pattern of intent in the Orgum's actions. Right now, at least, we know that the Orgums want to capture Commissioner Montoya. Why? We don't know. If nothing else, Rom V's simmering finale picks up the pace as the point of view switches from one action to the next to keep the readers engaged. Ten-Eyed Man acts as an outlet for Rom V's frequently pretentious narration so he can get that out of his system and fits within the character that he's using for that. So overall, it's not a bad start. Get some action, you get some information, you get at least some purpose in the supposed want to capture Montoya. So overall, not a bad start. When the asthma forces arrive at the GCPD, Montoya's police urge her to evacuate, but she doesn't want to. Instead, she leads them to the roof. Her police later realize what she's up to when she activates the long dormant bat signal, summoning Batman to enter the fray and battle Ten Claw, a werewolf Orgum who is leading the asthma detail trying to capture her. Meanwhile, Mr. Freeze unleashes a winter in July storm that lowers temperatures across the city to slow the exponential spread of asthma infections. Here we start to see again the cracks in the story even though it's presented in a pretty package. On the one hand, the preceding sequence of events is full of fast-paced action and energy. But on the other hand, it only works if you just accept that everyone did all the right things all at once, regardless of time or foreknowledge. How did Batman happen to get to the roof to fight Tenclaw within seconds of Montoya activating the signal? How did Mr. Freeze know cold affects asthma, and why was he prepared to set off a citywide storm? It's these little shortcuts and convenient coincidences that frequently pile up to pull you out of the issue. It, I mean, if we put it all together, it looks like a pretty fast-paced, action-oriented package. But when you think about how did all that come together, it's just things that happen at random, conveniently. Ten Claw manages to inject Montoya with a knockout drug during the fight while Batman is engaged with the asthma brutes. The werewolf leaps to the city street below, where Van is waiting. Batman follows, but it's Two-Face who kinda sorta saves the day by nicking Ten Claw's arm with a silver bullet. Harvey urges Batman to go after the van as it's speeding away while he settles his score with Tenclaw. And now we're going to repeat that criticism because it, it applies here. Generally speaking, Tenclaw's defeat scene makes sense, but only if you accept that Two-Face just happened to be in the right place at the right time and armed with the exact right weapon for him to deal with a superior foe. You get the impression Ron V is racing to tie up all the hundreds of loose ends that have backed up over the course of the series, so he has to take every shortcut possible to get there. Without giving too much more away, the issue concludes with Batman rescuing Montoya, Mr. Freeze putting the multi-limbed Niang on ice, Batman taking a moment for a lover's chat with Selina, and Duella Dent showing up out of the blue to separate Shadow Angel's head from his body. Ah, Shadow Angel, we hardly knew ye. I mean that literally. Wasn't he just introduced? And this is the kind of stuff that drives us crazy about this series, particularly with Ron V's method of storytelling. It's just things happen to put on a big show 
but if you think about how it came to be, it either is overblown or doesn't make sense. How did Duella know where Shadow Angel would be? How did she get into the building? How did she get close enough to kill him with nobody else around him noticing? It doesn't make, it looks good, but it doesn't just, it just doesn't make any sense. Overall, Detective Comics number 1087 is one of the better issues in the series based almost entirely on the improved pacing. Half the plot developments are still a complete mystery and things happen out of the blue for no particular reason, but at least there's some action and energy and a vague sense of direction to keep you engaged. If that's good enough, great. If not, well, we just have to wait till October. Normally I don't cover the backups of the reviews because half the time they're a waste of time, but in this case there's one that's kind of okay, entertaining, and even a little bit amusing. Dan Waters gives readers a standalone tale centering on Nightwing and Azrael's contentious partnership as they fight the Asmer forces on the streets of Gotham. Nightwing is, understandably, not inclined to believe Azrael when he says he'll keep his word about not killing anyone. For his part, Azrael proves trustworthy, but he's forced to endure a few comedic bonks on the head from Nightwing to prove it. To be clear, the backup isn't a comedy or just a yuck fest, but it is amusing watching Azrael behave himself in the face of Nightwing's taunts and even a little bit of slapstick. Not exactly, but sort of. So it ends on a humorous note, but not necessarily a jokey note. So final thoughts, what do we think about Detective Comics number 1087? It ups the action, energy, and pacing to deliver one of the better issues in the series. That said, the plot only works if you accept a tidal wave of shortcuts, convenient coincidences, and happy accidents that put everyone exactly where they need to be at exactly the right time, without explanation, that with all the tools they need to make things happen to save the day. The art's decent enough, and the individual scenes are perfectly good, but it's clear Rom V is throwing every bit of smoke and flash at the reader to cover up how rushed this finale is turning out to be, and how many shortcuts he has to inject to get things to happen. Therefore, Detective Comics number 1087 from DC Comics earns a 6 out of 10. In isolation, this comic is mildly entertaining, but taken within the context of the arc and the series as a whole, which should be a grand build-up to a grand climax, feels more like some faulty substance hidden under distracting noise. But what do you think? Leave us a thumbs up if you're a Batman fan, and leave a comment below with your expectations for Detective Comics after Ram V's run ends in September. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic if you so choose. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.